Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, September 13th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Big first item today, of course, is Patch Tuesday. Microsoft released patches for 66 vulnerabilities. Five of them are critical and two are already being exploited. As usual for our summary, it does include the Chromium vulnerabilities and batches that are included in Microsoft Edge and typically were already been released a few days or a week or so ahead of Patch Tuesday. The two already exploited vulnerabilities are of course the ones that are sort of the headliners here. One is a Microsoft streaming service proxy vulnerability. It's a privilege escalation vulnerability that could help an attacker to gain system privileges after they initially compromised the system. The second one is a bit more interesting, I think. It's labeled as only in an information disclosure vulnerability and that's true but uh, it does disclose ntlm hashes so it's not one of those information disclosure vulnerability that uh, does uh, provide access to some internal kernel state or so to help with buffer overflows but this one actually releases ntlm hashes given the weak hashing of those hashes it does release your windows uh, password it's a very typical vulnerability in that essentially the attacker tricks uh, the user into establishing an outbound connection which then requires authentication or receiving site and automatically the NTLM hashes are being sent. We had this vulnerability in a number of different contexts. This latest one happens in Microsoft Word as the user previews a document in the preview pane. As we had very similar vulnerabilities before attacks are readily available, it typically is as easy as including an SMB link in a document that is then automatically being accessed. Blocking port 445 also often helps against this vulnerability. It's something that you probably should have done a long time ago. Microsoft also assesses the attack complexity as low. As far as other notable vulnerabilities go, the most critical one according to the CFSS score this month is 88 Eight, and it's a remote code execution vulnerability in internet connection sharing. Interesting service, not sure how many people actually still use it these days, but basically allows you to sort of turn your Windows workstation into like a router. I can see where people use that while on the road maybe and have like a phone tethered from their Windows machine and then use that sort of kind of like as a hotspot. This uh, particular vulnerability does not uh, require any authorization and can lead to remote code execution. Again, probably the biggest protection here is that uh, you're not actually going to have this service enabled uh, typically. And definitely be careful when you're on the road about enabling it regardless of this vulnerability. Secondly, we do have an exploit against uh, Visual Studio that has a CVSS score of 7.8. Yet another sort of attack vector against developers, something I have been looking into quite a bit lately. So uh, something else that attackers can do typically they get remote code execution on developer system not by exploiting vulnerabilities like this but by just tricking the developer into for example installing a malicious library Talking to Renato earlier, who always put together this great table for us, he sort of considers this an average patch used, and I tend to agree with this. Yes, uh, two uh, already exploited vulnerabilities, and like I said, that Microsoft Word one is the one to really watch out for. And then not really a patch, but something to keep an eye on. OpenSSL 1.1.1 is now end of life. This was announced today by the OpenSSL project as part of releasing some 
updates. This is expected. This was actually announced, I think, uh, five years ago or so that it will uh, go end of life. But it's one of those libraries that uh, keeps sticking around. I even see it occasionally on even current uh, Linux systems, often as part of sort of other software that then uh, carried uh, this OpenSL library along. So uh, double check uh, what OpenSL libraries you have on your systems. And that's actually a good thing to inventory from time to time and kind of keep an eye on. And yes, Adobe still delivers updates on Patch Tuesday. This time it's the turn for Adobe Connect, Adobe Acrobat and Reader, as well as Adobe Experience Manager. Acrobat and Reader, of course, are always a concern that's commonly installed on Windows systems. The Windows and Mac version is a vulnerable here and the vulnerabilities themselves well there is really only one in out of bound write that can lead to arbitrary code execution so uh, get it patched and it's cve 2023 26369 well that's it for today thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow